Hello again, everybody. I'm uh, talking more about my cosmic ray detector today, and we're going to look a little more closely at how the actual detector amplifier circuit works. So, as we zoom in here on the topped detector, you can see I have two oscilloscope probes. One is uh, for channel one on my oscilloscope is um, connected right there to the uh, output of the actual silicon photomultiplier that's attached to this um, right there, and it's attached to the scintillator. And so we're seeing the raw uh, pulse coming straight out of that detector. And then the, uh, the channel two probe is connected to the uh, output of the first amplifier stage. Um, and so it, it um, boosts the signal. And I have my oscilloscope set up. And as you can see, so channel one is the yellow and channel two is the blue. And if, if, if I zoom in on the, the uh, settings, we have uh, 20 millivolts per division for channel one and then uh, 500 millivolts per division on channel two. And you can see that they're tracking pretty much, but uh, all it's done is uh, the amplifier has um, raised the level of the signal uh, considerably so that it can it can be processed. So now I'm going to actually change over here um, to the other side of this diode and we'll see the diode and capacitor in this circuit and I'll show you the circuit diagram in a minute um, does, does a pulse stretching function and so what we see now on channel 2 we're looking at the stretch pulse and uh, so the input pulse is still that short pulse, but now we've got um, we've got a a much longer. Let's uh, zoom out here in time, and what we'll see is we should see some longer pulses so you can see what happens and I'll freeze it here what we have is um, right there on channel one you've got the the really short pulse coming out of this silicon photomultiplier and then after it goes through the pulse stretcher what happens is the diode very rapidly dumps all of that energy into a capacitor and the capacitor charges, but then it can't um, go back out of that diode and so it just slowly decays because there's a lot of higher resistance um, going out of that circuit. And so uh, what happens is the pulse charges that capacitor and the capacitor diode network stretches the pulse out longer in time and that allows us then to use a comparator circuit, which is the other side of the amplifier, to um, turn that stretched out pulse into a, a digital pulse. And I'm gonna see if I can hook up here to that so we can see it. And let's see here. So, let's, and let's uh, see if we can see the digital pulse. There we go. And now I'm going to change the range here so we can see it. So now, that's what the digital pulse looks like coming out. And um, depending on the energy of the incoming particle, the, the height of the stretch pulse is higher or shorter. And um, so it changes, there's a fixed threshold at which the comparator turns on and turns off. And so the, 
the higher energy particles just create a longer pulse and the, sh the lower energy pulses create a lower pulse and then you'll notice sometimes it triggers and it doesn't give a pulse and that's because there's actually a setting on the uh, comparator that's adjustable that sets the threshold level and so below a certain energy it doesn't trigger at all and there we go and the, the, the good thing is you find a good trigger level that that works well for it because um, muons and co from cosmic rays are fairly high energy they're in the mega electron volt range several me mega electron volts and so that's the reason why the discriminator works where you have coincident mode where you only count what's going through both detectors because in order for it to penetrate both detectors it has to go through the electrical tape through a foil coating that's optically sealing it and through the actual scintillator plastic back out the foil and tape and then through the board and through the all of that stuff on the other detector and so you end up uh, you only have uh, fairly high energy particles that, that are able to to go through all of that stuff uninhibited and um, so the lower energy particles are usually low energy beta particles from beta decay in the, in the environment um, and those are fairly low energy and they don't they don't have much penetrating power and so so we can kind of ignore those